When demanding at a compulsory tone, show me the curve, show me the curve. Flat earthers haven't the faintest idea how much curve they should expect in a spherical earth model. They are to blame themselves because most of them are rather mathematical illiterate. But the globe earthers are to blame too because at the question how much curvature should we see or at what altitude should we expect to see curvature, they give an array of answers that are not very consistent. Varying from 8 kilometers to 100 kilometers, they come up with all kinds of numbers without substantiating their claim. When I was challenged myself to answer this question, I decided to look into this matter. In doing so, I must thank especially five red pairs who gave me the idea how to express this curvature. But first I have to get a popular misunderstanding out of the way. When you have a ball and the person standing on top of that ball, that person can only see that part of the ball that is lying within the scope of a line of sight that is tangent to the ball. Anything beyond that point is obscured by the ball itself. The distance to this point stays constant when the person turns a full 360 degrees. The line connecting all the points at that same distance is a circle. That circle we call the horizon. Popular belief has it that you are supposed to see the curvature of the ball but in fact you just see the curvature of the circle. <coughs> and since your eye height is small compared to the radius of the circle, you see the curvature of the foreshortened view of the circle, that is an ellipse. That is the curved horizon you see. <coughs> the radius of the circle is dependent of your eye height and the radius of the ball you are standing on and the earth is a very big ball. When your eye height is small, as when you are standing on the beach, your, eye, your horizon lies close by and you look at it at a very shallow angle. You are looking at a very foreshortened circle, so at a very flat ellipse. First we have to establish how we are defining the curve in this special case. My definition it goes as follows. We draw the angle of view of the observer. That defines the part of the horizon we actually see. If we draw a line through the points where the angle view crosses the horizon, we get a chord. The distance between the chord and the horizon, called the sagitta, is the amount of curvature we see but we see this distance also foreshortened, so we define the angle of view from the observer to the sagitta. This angle of view we call the angular difference between the visible curvature. You can calculate this angular difference, but that requires some mathematics. Though it's trigonometrics of high school level, it seems to put off most flat earthers who claim that math doesn't depict reality and that globe earthers only use mathematics to disguise their evil intentions. So put on your safety belts. This is a simplified view of the earth, the top view above and the side view underneath. Assume an observer with an eye height of h standing on top of the ball with a radius r looking towards the horizon at a distance along his line of sight, tangent to the ball. We call this L. The collection of lines of sight around the observer forms a circle with a horizontal radius of D. Basic mathematics say that L equals the square root of H 
squared plus 2 times h times r. For a person with a eye height of 1.7 meters and the radius of the earth r of 6371 kilometers that would result in l equals 4.65 kilometers. Since the angle theta equals the, the inverse cosine of h plus s over l, we can calculate theta to be 89.968 degrees. d equals 4.65 kilometers. Now we assume that the observer has a horizontal field of view of 90 degrees. Then we could calculate the angular difference of the visible curvature according to our definition we gave earlier. This angular, uh, this angular difference turns out to be 0 0.01733 degrees. This angle increases when your eye height increases, but not as rapidly as you would expect. As mentioned, you perceive the horizon as if standing <coughs> a little above a circle slightly looking down. You might say that your lines of sight form a cone with your eyes at the top and the circle horizon as its base. This horizon circle you perceive as a flattened ellipse. When your eye height is higher, as when sitting in an airplane, your horizon lies farther away and you look at it at a steeper angle. You are looking more down on the circle, which is less foreshortened. The ellipse looks like a somewhat lesser flattened ellipse. The effect of the circle being larger works, works against your looking more downward to it. Therefore, it is not easy to give the degree of curvature of hand. So, again, we have to apply some mathematics. It looks more complicated than it really is, but it is a pain to calculate this angular difference in the visible curvature all over again for different eye heights. So I made a little spreadsheet that does the calculations for me, and in the meantime it also gives the distance to the horizon along line of sight, and the angle at which you have to look downwards to the horizon. These are the results of the calculations for an angle of view of 90 degrees. This is the maximum angle of view of a high quality camera that doesn't distort the image. At an eye height of 1.7 meters, the angular difference is 0.017 degrees. At 1 kilometer, it is 0 0.420 degrees. At 10 kilometers, it's 1.3 degrees and so on and so forth. Up till 100 kilometers, where the angular difference is 4.0 degrees. This, however, is a rather optimistic approach. The maximum field of view of our eyes, in which we can see really sharp, is about 35 degrees. This also is a typical field of view of a consumer's camera with a 35 mm lens. At this field of view, the angular difference is drastically reduced. At an eye height of 1.7 meters, it is 0 0.002 degrees. At one kilometer, it is 0 0.049 degrees. At 10 kilometer, it's 0.153 degrees. And so on and so forth. up 
till 100 km where the angular difference is still only 0.478 degrees. When we put these figures in a diagram it looks like this for a field of view of 90 degrees, resulting in a graph that has a more or less parabolic form. The figures of a field of view of 35 degrees set in the same diagram look like this resulting in again a parabolic graph that's quite flattened out. So you see, reality doesn't match your expectations. You would expect to see a rather spectacular curve, but the curve you actually see is a little less than disappointing. <laughs>